Hey guys, it's Ryan from DoHardMoney.com coming to you with a question of the day. Every single day I answer a question and if you've got a question, I could be answering it. Please type your question in the comments below. It could be real estate, it could be real estate investing, money, finance. Type it in the questions below because I'd be more than happy to help answer any question that you may have. So today's question of the day is what is a good DSCR ratio? A DSCR is basically the debt service coverage ratio. This typically applies to commercial property. So if you are a fix and flipper um, and that type of thing, you're not gonna be dealing with this if you're wholesaling fix and flip. And, and typically if you're doing like a bird type deal or even just a rental on a single family property, not as big of a deal. Um, but what a DC, uh, DSCR debt service coverage ratio is, is it's calculating how much cash flow you have as compared to your debt and uh, your expenses. So basically what they're saying is, hey, uh, and HUD wants to see 1.2 if it's a low income property, 1.15. Basically what that means is if you're getting $1,200 in cash flow, they want to make sure that no more than $1,000 is being used in expenses. So they want to make sure that you've got a ratio of that 1.2. So you've got a little bit more in cash flow than you actually have in expenses. So it's cash flow compared, cash flow coming from the rents compared to the expenses that you have becomes this DSCR ratio. Again, this is more for multifamily. This is something you're going to be using when you're dealing with commercial properties. If you're just getting a loan on a single family house, it's not as big of a deal that you're going to be looking at these types of things. But I think it's a good rule of thumb of saying, hey, you want to make sure you have about 20% more coming in than the expenses on the debt itself coming from the cash flow. Now, we're not talking about profit, right? We're talking about the rent um, that comes in, um, less any expenses, it look divided over what's actually on the loan ends up being in that 1.2% 1 1 .2 is basically what we're looking for on that. So I still think it's a good rule of thumb, even if you're dealing with a residential type property to make sure you've got about a 20% margin um, over and above what your expenses are is basically gives you a cushion for reserves, gives you a cushion for repairs, capital improvements. I think it's a, it's a really good rule of thumb to be looking at because those things are gonna be some expenses expenses that you're going to be dealing with as time goes on. One tip on that is set those expenses aside, put them into a bank account or a high yield savings account so you have that money when it comes up. It can be a really good way for planning so you don't end up with a big bill that you weren't expecting in the future. If this was helpful for you, please hit that thumbs up button. If you have a question of the day you'd like me to answer, type it in the comments below. I've got a couple of videos you should check out. Um, can you buy properties with bad credit? Check that video out. Or I've got a video on what is hard money. Because a lot of people are wondering that and how that would apply in a situation like this as we're talking about a debt service uh, coverage ratio, which really that does not apply to any type of hard money loans. Again, if you have a question of the day, put it in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to answer it for you. And if you're looking for help, if you need software tools, help finding properties, help funding properties, real estate investing, check us out over at dohardmoney.com. D-O-H-R-D-M-O-N-E-Y.com. We may be a good fit for each other. Uh, we can see if that might be something we could look at. Otherwise, make it a very profitable day. Bye for now.